there are radioactive secrets beneath the banks and waters of a north county creek that may be linked to a staggering number of cancers, illnesses, and birth defects. As the I-Team's Lisa Zygman reports tonight, in just four square miles, there are three reported cases of conjoined twins and cancer rates that one data expert says is statistically impossible. Lisa? Mike, this is all coming to light because a group of McClure North graduates started documenting how many of their peers were facing serious illnesses. The unanswered question is why? The inviting currents of Coldwater Creek, there's something very wrong, wind through miles of North County neighborhoods, parks, and schools. Why are all these people in North County sick? Carrying a legacy of nuclear waste. Roughly 15 people that I know of that I've found over the past couple of months. Just uh, in this neighborhood. Just in this neighborhood. Karen Nickel, who has an autoimmune disease, can't believe how many of her classmates and childhood neighbors are getting sick. I don't want my kids or any other kids to end up like me. About two years ago, Janelle Wright and several of her class of 88 McClure North High School friends started wondering why so many of their peers were battling cancer. Where it got to be suspicious was um, when we had two friends that were diagnosed within a few months of each other with appendix cancer, and both people were told that that's a one in a million cancer. Wright, an accountant and former auditor, started collecting data from her classmates. Soon, peers from neighboring schools reached out too. On Facebook, this just took off like wildfire. People started reporting their cancers and then autoimmune diseases. At first, there were 30 cases. Within two months, she had data on 200. Now, her maps have 700 cases in four square miles, including 62 brain cancers. 27 cases of leukemia, 26 cases of lung cancer, 24 cases of multiple sclerosis, 15 cases of lymphoma, 10 cases of pancreatic cancer, and three cases of conjoined twins. Wright became equally alarmed when data showed some of her classmates' children had serious medical problems too. We're seeing odd things like several children have had to have their thyroids removed before they were 10 years old. Strange coincidence or was something else at play? Another classmate is now a professor of statistics at Northwestern University and she ran her own analysis. She says the likelihood of so many of her peers having cancer is 0 0.00000001, a statistical improbability. Connected by Facebook, high school, and illness, they made a startling discovery. The creek where they played as children carried a secret. In the 1940s, Malincroft Chemical Works in downtown St. Louis purified thousands of tons of uranium to make the first atomic bombs. But the process also generated enormous amounts of radioactive waste. Citing national security, the government quietly ordered the material moved to North St. Louis County in 1947. 21 acres of airport land became a dumping site where a toxic mixture of uranium, thorium, and radium sat uncovered or in barrels. In the 60s, government documents noted contents from the rusting barrels were seeping into nearby Coldwater Creek. And by the 90s, the government confirmed unsafe levels of radioactive materials in the water. You're having to grasp this idea that there was something wrong that nobody knew about, our parents didn't know. Janelle and the 2,000 people now on her Coldwater Creek Facebook page wonder if over the years they breathed in radioactive dust that blew in from the dump or swallowed small amounts of toxic creek water. Just too surreal that this many people are sick. Janelle hopes she is wrong about the cancer and link to Coldwater Creek. Her greatest fear is that she is right. Based on the latest data, the Army Corps of Engineers reports there is no contamination threat to current homeowners. 30 people recently filed suit against Mallinckrodt and other companies. A spokesperson for Mallinckrodt said the company was not involved in the disposal or cleanup of the waste.
Lisa, what about the Centers for Disease Control? Can they determine if there's a cancer cluster here? It's possible if they decide to get involved, and that's what this group ultimately wants. They want to have their data validated and to finally uncover the truth. Now, the stuff at Coldwater Creek, most of it has been cleaned up, but some of the same nuclear waste that contaminated Coldwater Creek ended up at the Westlake landfill in Earth City. The landfill sits on a floodplain just eight miles from a water intake, intake station. And tomorrow night at 10, I'll look at the growing outrage regarding Westlake and why the EPA has yet to act. All right, we'll look forward to that tomorrow night. Thanks, Lisa. The majority of St. Louisans who get their water from the Missouri River have most likely never heard of the Westlake landfill, but they should. Since 1973, 8,000 tons of nuclear waste has been decaying at this landfill with no protective liner to separate it from groundwater. As frightened homeowners plead for help, I take an in-depth look at whether the EPA's latest assurances can be trusted. To understand the depths of concern, it's shameful, shameful. Just look at the faces of those who wanted EPA officials to hear them. I am sicker than a dog. Autoimmune diseases. Autism. Karen Nickel, who battles lupus, Autism. believes she too is sick because of the nuclear waste dumped here nearly 40 years ago. Westlake especially is a ticking time bomb right now. The origins of the waste date back to the Manhattan Project and the creation of the first atomic weapons. Enormous amounts of uranium were purified at Mallinckrodt Chemical Works in downtown St. Louis. The process generated piles of nuclear waste that the government sent to disposal sites near the airport. In the 70s, about 8,000 tons of uranium, thorium, and radium were dumped at Westlake. That stuff is sitting uh, unprotected, not covered, no liner, no barrier. Westlake sits on a floodplain. That is why so many people who live and work near the landfill say everyone in the region should be concerned. 300,000 people get their drinking water from the intake at the Missouri River, eight miles from here, and it flows in that direction. It's wet, there's high groundwater table, there's people nearby. It's really stupid. It's a stupid place for it. Bob Chris, a geochemist at Washington University, says few things are as absurd as burying this waste in a substandard landfill in a floodplain in an urban area. This material can kill you and you don't even know practically until you're dead. Five years ago, in 2008, the EPA decided to put a cap on the landfill and cover it with layers of clay, rock, and dirt. The problem, according to Chris, is that this stuff gets more toxic over time and that it lasts for billions of years. There was such a public outcry that the EPA wasn't moving the stuff out of Missouri that the agency decided to conduct more tests. The latest test made public two weeks ago showed 25 wells are contaminated with high levels of radium. Do you understand how alarmed the public is with this radioactive material in a floodplain in an urban area? People are not drinking the water that has the low levels of radium at the site. What about air? What about breathing it in? The radon, radon comes out of the ground everywhere. It's a naturally occurring element. It does come out of the ground a little bit more from this landfill but it dissipates pretty quickly. Those at this meeting were not comforted by what the EPA had to say, especially because those water samples were taken this summer during the drought. And the government paid the companies responsible for cleaning up the mess to conduct the tests. And I guess me just being a plain old citizen thinks, okay, well, if you know it's dangerous, chop, chop, <laughs> get it done. The EPA plans on doing more tests before issuing a final decision. One quick note about my report last night into the contamination of Coldwater Creek. The Facebook page that has been set up to collect cancer data was inundated after the story aired. In 24 hours, nearly 1,000 new visitors registered on the site to learn more.